Pigs.com's Jeff Rabjohns, Trevor Andershock, Jerry Kelly here. About an hour from tip off with for Indiana at Minnesota. But the big news coming out of tonight is Indiana head coach Mike Woodson will be back for a fourth season next year. Uh, Rabby, obviously this news is uh, coming just before a game, which is odd timing here. Um, and obviously there's been speculation for multiple weeks now. Can you kind of just uh, run us through how, how they came to this decision uh, as much as you can? Yeah, basically there were, there were a lot of conversations uh, over the last uh, several weeks, probably even going back more like a month or so. Uh, a number of people weighed in, uh, former players, um, big time supporters of the program, uh, other you know involved, concerned constituents, and different people had different opinions. And um, that was all listened to. Different things were weighted. Different things were debated. And then the decision was made to to bring him back. And I think part of the reason for the timing is if you're going to bring him back uh, with portal season opening here very shortly, um, you got to kind of get the word out. I, th I think, you know, whichever way you were going to go, uh, I think with portal season, uh, the sooner you make a decision, the better. And obviously, with, with some of the fan base, uh, it's not a popular decision. Uh, we've already seen the reaction on the board, uh, seen the reaction on, on social media. Um, but even if you're, but if you're going to bring your guy back, um, you got to give him a chance. That that you do have to do. You got to give him a chance to go in the portal and get players, uh, because they're going to need four to six players depending upon movement. Um, so I think that was part of the timing to to help um, Mike Woodson and his staff uh, have their best opportunity to do something in the portal. So I think that was part of the timing um, why, uh, why people, uh, you know, w w whispered in my ear uh, a little while ago. Um, and it was one of those things where like earlier this afternoon, I got a couple texts and I was kind of like, Hmm, okay. Is this decision or is this a lean? That's what I was trying to figure out for, I don't know, about two hours. And then uh, on the way over here um, from the hotel to the Williams arena here in Minnesota, uh, got to confirm that he is coming back. But I do think part of the timing is to get the word out from my use perspective. This is our guy. He's here uh, to try to help him have a chance in the portal. Mm -hmm. Trevor, obviously this is a uh, very fresh news just broke about half an hour ago. Um, what are your initial reactions to this? Uh, are you surprised um, that, that, that he's getting the fourth year here? Uh, the biggest thing is the timing. We kind of talked about a little bit just before a game. I thought that was uh very interesting timing that this would come out. You know, not, anything could happen at Minnesota. It could become a bad loss or something, and you're announcing that he's coming back right before that. Uh, uh, things could get interesting. But um, that's probably the most shocking part about it. I always thought, you know, he hasn't had a losing season at IU. So to make a change, you would have to be really forward thinking to get that done. Kind of be like uh, Nebraska firing Frank Solich, uh, you know, in the early 2000s when he was – doing pretty well at Nebraska, had one 500 season, um, and then they kind of got rid of him. That would be the same thing Indiana would be doing with Mike Woodson since, you know, he makes the tournament to his first two years. This year dips down, but they're still over 500, still competitive um, in Big Ten games. So I thought it would be a real surprise if they would make that move. Um, obviously, the rumors were swirling for the last month or two. Um, but, yeah, Go back to just the timing seemed really weird for me. Um, obviously, they didn't come out and make a formal statement about it, but for it to come out right before the uh, one of the uh, final games of the season is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. There was no formal statement uh, from Scott Dolson. I'm sure we'll hear from uh, Mike Woodson after after the game tonight. But, uh, Rabbit, do you expect a more formal statement to come out after the season? Or is this kind of a thing that, you know, they, they got the news out there and then we'll see what happens uh, as, as the offseason goes on? Yeah, as of right now, I haven't had a chance to check in on exactly what they're going to do formally. Uh, you would think at some point they either have to do a press conference um, um with, with Dolson and, and with Woodson, uh, maybe with a couple other people. Um, but if, if you're going to make this decision um, and you want to sort of back it up, one of the best ways is to, you know, do a presser, um, maybe have, you know, Quinn Buckner, chairman of the board of trustees, Scott Dolson, athletic director, Pam Witten, university president, you know, all the, all the normal people when, when you want to make a statement and you want to make it emphatically, that would probably make the most sense. Um, but I don't know if they do that here the next couple of days or if they actually wait until the end of the season to kind of do a 
you know, like a little bit of state of the program or just explain, you know, why, why they, you know, feel confident in Mike Woodson and they're standing behind him. Um, but yeah, there's, there's nothing, I haven't seen anything, but I really have not had a chance to check on exactly what is the plan as far as formal statements go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trevor, looking ahead a little bit here, obviously, you know, there's gonna be a lot of work to do this off season. Uh, you know, you have to figure call where's uh, going to go to the draft. Uh, Xavier Johnson is going to graduate, obviously. And then uh, you're left over with Trey Galloway, Mackenzie and Baca, Malik Renew. And then, you know, you basically got to uh, find a whole bunch of the supporting cast, you know, bench players, role players. Uh, how does Indiana even move forward with as much as they're going to need back, uh, you know, and then coming off of this season, uh, you know, Mike Woodson's third year? Well, I think it starts with Malik Renew. You have to get him to come back. Obviously, every player in college basketball is open to transferring at this point. You know, there's always better opportunities, more money somewhere, better role. Um, basically, even if guys don't put their name in the portal, they've at least thought about it a little bit and debated if this is the right situation. So Mike Woodson really has to win over Malik, um, make sure he's coming back first. Same with Trey Galloway, make sure he's coming back. And then kind of work your way down the line with, the, you know, Leela, Liam McNeely, make sure he's still on board and enthusiastic about working for you and, you know, coming in and helping the program right away. And then hopefully that spreads into the portal recruiting. You know, they've laid the, the foundation behind the scenes to do get that done this year. Um, we'll see if, you know, Woodson being up in the air about his long-term future at IU hurts him at all. But you would think with transfers, you're only basically thinking about next year or maybe two years down the line. So it shouldn't hurt him too much. Um, obviously the portal is going to be huge when you're going to be filling in a bunch of key, key roster spots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, th- I think that's moving forward. I think that's the biggest thing for IU is, is the transfer portal. Um, if they're going to completely revamp this roster and get to where they go into next year with the opportunity to win NCAA tournament games, like I said, you're going to need somewhere between four to six guys, I think. And uh, who, who leaves, you know, we'll see. But I, I think it's pretty clear that not everybody who can come back is going to come back. Um, so I think the biggest thing is, is the transfer portal. And they do have, you know, they do have some more connections going into the 2024 transfer portal than they had the past two years, um, as, as we've noted on, on the Peaks.com board now for, for a while. And, um, you know, it's relationships, relationships, relationships. And they do have some that, that can be very helpful. They do also have a very robust NIL. Um, the, the general belief behind the scene is IU has the most money in the Big Ten Conference. I think that's true. It's hard to prove that. Uh, but based upon some numbers that I know are true, I think that's accurate. Um, regardless of exactly where they rank, they have enough money. They have enough money to to get something done in the portal because with, with, portal, with transfer portal players, um, NIL is a big factor. Um, with some guys, it is the factor. Okay, it's just some players look at this almost like, like a job. Like you know, okay, you know, I got I got four job offers. Who's going to pay me the most money? That's probably the job I'm going to take. Um, so that is a factor. But I think th- this now turns into a situation where you know, barring a run to, you know, winning the Big Ten tournament championship, you know, the the focus now is on the portal and next year. Yeah, they got some games to play. I understand that Minnesota's night senior day with Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament. But as far as the future of the program right now, it is about the transfer portal. Uh, Trevor, this might be a tough question, uh, but going forward here, if you, you know, if you're, if you're in the, the, the shoes of a, a Indiana fan, what are the maybe markers for optimism that, that Mike Woodson might be able to turn this thing around next year? Uh, and how can he, uh, you know, specifically this off season kind of, um, you know, uh, improve the enthusiasm of the fan base as a whole? I, I think you have to look at the big picture. This year was obviously worse than you expected or worse than you hoped for, but the wheels did not completely fall off. And Mike Woodson and his staff have kept this team together long after they've been eliminated from the NCAA tournament picture. I mean, that was almost, what, four, six weeks ago that they were basically eliminated from the NCAA tournament picture. And they've continued to play hard, continue to play together. Um, So I think you build on that. And then with the portal, anything can happen. It's kind of like an NFL team going from worst to first here um anything if you have a good uh portal season of recruiting and you flip that roster over get the pieces you want pieces that can help you right away i mean you can change in a hurry obviously we've seen teams that go real heavy in the portal not have success but 
if you limit it to, you know, four or five key guys, you're getting in the portal. I think Indiana has a chance to bounce back in a big way next year if they do have success in the portal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rabbit. Yeah, and I just to follow up real quick, it's like, you know, I think it's it's they're going to need four to six guys, but it's about getting the right guys. You know, you, you look at, um, you know, Illinois' backcourt, you know, got a lot better with getting a player from, from Southern Illinois. That helped them. Um, you, you look at Purdue, you know, they're, they've been top five in the country all year, right? Number one for several stretches, you know, they added Lance. That was a good piece for them. And obviously Indiana is going to need frontline dudes. Like they, they, they got to go get some guards and wings. They have to go get guards and wings. I know they want a rim protecting center to replace Chloe Ware. I get that. That's how, that's how coach Woodson likes to play. But the biggest issue for Indiana, obviously, as everybody knows, you know, the guard play wings. Guys who can make threes, guys who can create off the dribble. I mean, you don't have to shoot a ton of threes, but you can't be ranking 340 something. You, you can't be awful. And you had guard play is mandatory. Guards win in the NCAA tournament. Um, they can be slashers, they can be drivers, they can they can get to the line. There's different ways for guards to be productive, but you need guards and wings. And I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, if they were able to get somebody the level of a, I mean, what would what would the ideal be? A Caleb Love, maybe somebody in that general idea. Maybe a little better shooter, but that that general idea, and then then maybe get some. And I don't mean Caleb Love specifically. I just mean player like that, you know. And then if you can, you got Liam McNeely coming in. You know, he led the EYBO Scholastic as a junior in three point shooting. He's having a fantastic senior year. He projects as somebody you can come in and play. So okay, there's one, but one's not enough. You need multiple. You know, if you can go get you know another guy who can you know make threes, and then get maybe get another. You know, if you want to stay taller, you know, get an Alex Caravan type or something like that. You know, you can put the roster. You really, you really can. It's not easy, um, but it absolutely can be done. Like Trevor said, you know, you can go worst to first in, in the NFL. And I don't know if you can go where Indiana is to a Big Ten title contender, but you can get to where you can you can contend to win NCAA tournament games. You can you can. It absolutely can happen. Hey, to build on that, I think uh, kind of a dynamic point guard should be the biggest mm-hmm. concern you're losing Xavier. Uh, obviously you'll have more than likely Gabe cups will come back for his sophomore year with a bunch of experience. Trey Galloway likely back who's handled the ball a bunch, but if you could get a dynamic point guard who can make plays for himself and others, I think that really takes the program to a different level. It's something they've missed, especially with X out for a majority of the last two years. That's really hurt them. And we've seen when he's good, I use a different team. And mm-hmm. uh, obviously we haven't seen it very much, but I think a dynamic point guard in the portal would really help things out a bunch. Yeah. yeah I, w- I would put that if I was ranking like needs, that's, that's number one need. Uh, if I was doing my list, number one need dynamic point guard, got to be able to turn the corner of the ball screen, get downhill, got to be able to create stuff off the dribble. Hopefully can, can make threes at at least a solid rate. But I would say number one, dynamic point guard. Number two, another guard or wing who has athletic ability, some breakdown ability. And number three, another guy to put out there with Liam McNeely uh, who can make three. I think those are one, two, three. And again, I know Woodson wants another rim protecting center, but uh, you know, Khalil Ware's had a fantastic season, and I was not making the NCAA tournament. It's for me one dynamic point guard, two another guard, two three combo if you want, whatever, and then and then another wing who can make threes. Those would be my three priorities if I was if I was listing them for for this Indiana roster. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trevor, obviously, you know, getting all these players from the, from the portal uh, is, is a lot easier said than done here. Uh, if you're Mike Woods, you know, going into the fourth year, what what is your pitch? What is your vision that you're trying to sell these transfers after coming off a you know a disappointing year like this one? Well, I think it starts with the like basically every role will be open, so you can come in, fill role X Y Z and be loved by a huge fan base that will support you. And and that means in person, crowd-wise, and NIL. And I think that's a big selling point. I mean, this fan base can really rally behind them. If they get off to a hot start next year, I think a lot of this stuff kind of gets pushed aside and people forget about it a little bit. I know a lot of people won't, but this fan base will come to the rescue if they show that, you know, they're building something here, the team's a lot better. And, you know, they have a solid direction that they're headed. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rabbi, I'll let, let you have the last thought here. 
Uh, yeah, obviously the season still has has to play out these last few games, but going into next year, what are what has to happen, uh, you know, for Mike Woodson to kind of validate that he deserved this this fourth year? Uh, job one, um, make the NCAA tournament. I think that they got to make it. Um, I think that that's the biggest thing. I think the other thing that would help the overall tenor of the fan base is if, if, if they were more competitive against the top teams. You know, you look at their results this year against, you know, UConn, Auburn, the better teams they've played, and they were really only competitive in that one game against Kansas. And part of that was uh, Trey Galloway had an unbelievable game, just absolutely, arguably his best game when you factor in caliber of opponent. But other, other games, they just weren't competitive. So I think the biggest thing is they got to make the NCAA tournament. And the other thing, just look more competitive, you know. You know, getting blown out by 28 to Auburn, 20 to UConn, you know, they just, you know, they, they were never in those games. So those were not competitive events. So I think the biggest thing is, you know, to make the NCAA tournament. And I think the ideal would be, you know, do something in the NCAA tournament. That would that would validate it. That that That's what, that's where Indiana needs to get back to because, you know, you look at what was it? Okay, didn't make it Queens last year, didn't make it four years of Archie Miller, made it first two of Woodson, not going to make it this year. Uh, so we're sitting there looking at eight years when Indiana has won a grand total of one game in the field of 64. One. And that was over a MAC team. Uh, I understand they won a game in the first four being Wyoming, but that's not the field of 64. So you're sitting there looking at an Indiana program that's won one game in the field of 64 in the last eight years combined, and I'm assuming they're not making it this year. Obviously it's not over, but I think that's a reasonable assumption. So if they don't make it this year, that eight years with one win in the field of 64. So for Indiana to really start being Indiana again, they need to start winning NCAA tournament games. So to me, job one, get to the NCAA tournament. Job two, do something in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. Rabbi, I would even take that a step further where IU probably needs to be in the projection to be like a top five, top six seed all season long just to keep the, the temperature down with the fan base. If they're on the bubble for most of the season, season or outside the bubble and still make it, I think the fan base would um, be ready to riot anyway. So I think just having a a season-long, you know, track record of being squarely in the tournament is something they need to strive for as well. That's a really good point. Yeah, because if, if you, like Woodson's first year, they, you know, they had to go, they had to win those two games, the Big Ten tournament, just to squeak in. And if they go, if next year they need to do something in the Big Ten tournament to squeak in, that's not going to calm the waters in Hoosier Nation. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think they need to be established early that this is an NCAA tournament team. And the question is, you know, what seed are they going to get? And and, and it probably needs to be a pretty solid seed. That's a really good point, Jeff. Well, we'll see what happens from here on out. But there you have it. Mike Woodson will be back for a fourth year in Bloomington. Uh, We'll have much more to come on the site. Jeff Rabjohns, Trevor Andershock, Jerry Kelly. Uh, We'll see you guys over on peaks.com.